Welcome back to Roosters Radio. We've got a real treat for you now, Roosters fans. This man, he's been at the club a long, long time. I was looking back doing a bit of research. He debuted all the way back in 2016. Who can forget he was captain of our under-20s back then when they won the comp. There was a star-studded lineup, uh, And I remember, you know, when he was plying his trade, heading up the old freeway up there to don the boots for the Wyong Roos. But he's come a long way since then. Uh, it's a very warm welcome to one of our favourites, Natty Butcher. Natty, welcome to Roosters Radio for the first time in 2024. Yeah, thanks, Silk. Thanks for having me on. There's a lot to talk about, mate, but let's, you know, let's address the weekend because I was uh, hosting up there at the Captain's Club and honest to God, mate, there must have been a Butcher family reunion up there on the eastern side of the field. There was Butchers, there was all the Maruba royalty that uh, are all your relatives. It was a big Mother's Day celebration up there. Yeah, it was great. It was great to have all the family out, obviously, um... It was Harmony's first Mother's Day, so it was great to, to have her there and run out in the field with her and, and our little fella. And then, um, yeah, like, mum and dad both come out, um, both nans, aunties, uncles, everyone was out it was there. All, yeah. It was all there. And it was good to see, obviously, and your first Mother's Day. So let's, uh, well, obviously, congratulations, mate, baby Bo. Yeah, thanks, How old mate. is he now? Um, six weeks on Friday. And was that his first footy game? That was his first footy game, yeah. Because I saw Harmony actually at the back of the, of the room... Uh, nursing with your mum and uh, just had a, a sly smile. So uh, it was great that he's out the football and it, I dare say there'll be plenty more games to come. Yeah, plenty more games to come. Uh, we got all the outfits at home and that, so he's all ready to go. How are you enjoying fatherhood? Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Um, you know, a bit of a challenge at times. <laughs> what, what's been the most challenging part so far? You're only six weeks in, mate. Oh, mate. The the sleep's probably been the, yeah. the toughest part, but, you know, nah, Harmony does, does the nights, which is good, but... Um, yeah, probably just settling in when he gets a bit overtired and that, <laughs> that can be a bit tough, yeah. How are you going balancing, you know, the, the heavy schedule you have as a professional athlete with, with being a dad? Um, yeah, no, it's it's yeah been a bit of a journey these past couple of weeks trying to figure that out and navigate that. But like I said, Harmony's doing such a great job. She's such a great mum and a real natural. So, you know, she's really taken one for the team, I guess. Speaking of taking one for the team, there's about four or five of you. There's a great photo uh, that was taken in the dressing room at the end of the match um, with all the new dads and, and their newborns. But it's a bit of a father's group that's, uh, you know, getting involved here. Now, I know Lindsay's about to join it as well, but how's it been amongst the playing group with all these new dads? Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, um, you know, obviously learning a lot from them. Um, we had a bit of a dad group um, happening in the preseason and just um, a lot of the dads were just sharing stories and, and giving advice, which is great, and I learned a lot from that. And so to be able to apply that straight away has definitely helped. We'll have to clear a room out, out the back there and have a little <laughs> bit of a play pen yeah, for exactly. They can bring the kids in. <laughs> now, uh, let's talk a bit of footy because um, you've been in scintillating form. I know the, we've won three on the trot, and um, you know, you've been one of our better forwards for those three games. But I read an article not so long ago prior, or it was after the Anzac Day match, where Robbo had a bit of a, a dig at you and said uh, you were going to be dropped if, if Victor wasn't ready. Well, you showed him, you scored two tries, <laughs> you had an absolute blinder. But, mate, it, it begs the question, you know, form at the start of the year to what it is now, what's been the change? Um, oh, I think, yeah, I just had to have a bit of a look at myself in the mirror, understand my game, my strengths, and, and get back to that. Um, you know, obviously it was good there, that Anzac Day game, you know, having Sammy back and having, you know, guys like Joe Manu and Dom Young outside me and really forming that connection there on the right edge. So, you know, to have those guys there and have that staples, they definitely helped me a lot too. And then it was also on me to just, yeah, get back to my game and my strengths. Well, you bagged two in that game against the Dragons. I know Dom Young got two um, on the weekend. I think Joey got two the other week. So that, that right-hand side, mate, I mean, actually, to be fair, both sides are pretty lethal, but uh, there's plenty happening. And I, I dare say a lot of that's got to do with the number seven. Yeah, for sure. Sammy's he's been playing great lately, obviously, just playing his footy and, and using his eyes up and his instinct. That's probably the best part about him. Um, you know, he really plays in the moment and that's what we love him for. Well, let me ask you, because you, <laughs> that try that he set up for Toops in the second half on the weekend... I don't think there's too many number sevens who on zero tackle or tackle one to a crossfield kick 50 metres to, to a winger on the burst. What, what what were you thinking in the moment when you saw that? Oh, well, when I first saw him kick it, I didn't see the space out there. So when I first saw him kick, I wasn't sure what he was thinking because, <laughs> you know, like I said, like you said, it was play one. So, um, But then once I saw that bore up and that free space that, yeah. Tubes has scored there. He's and the right guy for the for the moment too, yeah, Tubes. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Sammy does. He he looks up and he plays in the moment and he, he backs himself and his instincts. So, yeah, it's producing the results. 
So just going back to the form question, but mate, obviously um, you're in scintillating format, as are the whole team. What do you put it down to? Because there was a lot of talk amongst the playing group, you know, when we've been speaking to players each and every week about consistency. Well, you know, we've, we've fixed that by the looks of things. We're scoring plenty of points. What do you put it all down to? Um, I think we've had, like, we've been training really well. We've been really working hard on that, um, especially our attack. Obviously, our attack's probably been the best it's been for a number of years now. Um, and, we, yeah, we've been working hard on that, obviously. The defence is still building and still um, got a bit to work on there. But, um, yeah, we're really happy with our attack at the moment and the combinations that we're, we're building. Speaking of the attack, the first 20 minutes of that game on the weekend was some of the, the best I've seen in Roosters, I mean, for, for a long time. Being on the field, you know, we're scoring better than a point a minute. What are you thinking? Um, oh, I was hoping it was just going to keep going like yeah, that. So, uh, so we. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we made it hard for ourselves um, once that momentum sort of stopped. Um, but yeah, we realised we just uh, needed to get back to playing our footy and and play the way that we got those points um, from the start. You know, we spoke about st- starting fast. Uh, we're a bit disappointed the past couple of weeks, obviously having the opposition score first. So. Uh, we're really focused on that, starting fast and then just playing um, playing our footy. We got to probably 15 minutes from half time, and we kind of took the foot off the throat. If it seemed that way. A few errors started to creep in. You think we started looking at the scoreboard and we just thought we're going to roll through and that was what happened. Because to be fair, even in the second half, we, we actually lost the second half. But, yeah, we just didn't get to that same kind of lofty height that we were in the, the first 20. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, we forgot about how we got to those points from the start. You know, it was obviously through that um, that power game that we play and, and building off off that. We just tried to um, play footy with no momentum coming through that. And when you try and do that, that's when the errors happen. So, you know, we spoke about just, you know, if an error does happen, just getting our momentum back, playing powerful, and then we'll play off the back of that. Now, you're, you're an older statesman within the playing group now. You can actually feel that happening on the field. What's your role? So they scored a couple of tries in the second half. Are you part of that leadership group that's having words with the the, the team when you're behind the posts and we got and you're saying stuff? Come on, boys, let's go back to the process and let's go back to the systems. Yeah, I'd probably let um, guys like Teddy, Kez, Jared, probably those real senior leaders, um, lead those uh, team conversations. But you know, amongst the right edge and that, I'll I'll speak a bit more there and be a bit more vocal for sure. Talking about the the start we had, obviously it was Jared's 300th game. Do you think that was one of the reasons why you guys were so ready to play? I mean, well, before that, I love the fact that you've walked out with your partners and your mums and, and your loved ones. But then as soon as that first whistle went, you guys were on, ready to play. And it was like a bloodbath for the first, you know, 20 minutes. But do you think the fact that, you know, Robbo does make a, a note of celebrating those milestone games. Do you think that helped get you guys up for that for that uh, match on the weekend? Yeah, for sure. We love Jazza. Love everything that he's done um, as a club, and love him for everything he's done for me as an individual. So, to be able to celebrate him for three hundred Roosters games, um, and you know, we had a clear focus on playing the way that we did. Um, yeah, we really meant a lot to us. How's he improved you as a footballer? Um, just about going after games. Obviously, the physicality going with the pack mentality about our forwards versus their forwards um and then yeah just just training with each other steel sharp and steel obviously pushing me to to be the best player that i, I am when he leaves at the club uh, there's going to be a big void you know when he does finally leave and we've been talking recently uh on the podcast about who's going to step up and do the kick returns is something that interests you? You like like taking the ball off the kickoff or what? Oh, man, I'll take it if the team needs you to. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But, um, no, I've seen Spence have the good one off the weekend. So, yeah, <laughs> maybe leave it to him. Speaking of milestone games, mate, we've got another couple this week. And, obviously, we're taking on the, the ladder leaders, the Sharks, up there for uh, Magic Round. But I, I know it's Toops' 250th. And uh, I think Lindsay Collins plays his 100th. Has Robbo mentioned that this week? Um, no, he hasn't mentioned that yet, but the words got out amongst the boys. And, you know, the milestones, like I said, it's really important for us. Um, Lindsay obviously getting the bronze rooster there and then to, to be able to play 250. Um, yeah, love both those guys, love everything that they're doing um, and love how, you know, what they've done for the club at the moment. So, Where have you seen the biggest change in Lindsay's game over the past two to three seasons? Um, well, I think he's just really just dominating... Um, oppositions, you know, he obviously runs hard and tackles hard every week, but 
you know, the ability to just consistently do that and just continually turn up every minute and then be in all those in-between moments, you know, you often see him pick up those scraps or catch those high balls in, you know, spots that, you know, front rowers wouldn't normally do. So for him to be able to do that amongst all that tough stuff that he does, that's what's really separating him at the moment. And when you're playing behind that, is that what inspires you to be the next man up? Because one thing I've noticed, particularly over the past three games, I made a comment to Bush about it, is that we look like we're running harder and tackling harder than the opposition. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, that's um, something our forward pack really takes a pride in itself about being physical and um, showing our physical presence there. So that's that means a lot to us as well. Now, it's no secret there's plenty of back rowers or plenty of forwards in our in our squad at the moment. Do you feel pressure? You know, when you turn to train, you got your brother, you know, nipping at your heels. We've got players like Satili and Siwa who, who you know aren't in the squad at the moment. But like, does that? Uh, I suppose, I suppose, does that get you up for, for games and make you a better, you know, when you're training and putting the effort in there? Because, you know, they're all talented footballers and there's only, you know, basically two spots in the back row plus a, a bench player. You know, how does that change your mindset when, you know, there's these players, you know, chipping away underneath? Yeah, it's that healthy competition that we often speak about. Like, we're a pretty tight-knit group, the back rowers. Like, we're all real good mates and, um, you know, we know we're all vying for, for those spots, so... You know, it is tough, but, you know, we feel like we do get the best out of each other. We often speak about um, steel sharp and steel, and um, we know we're pushing each other and to just to be our best players. And, mate, away from footy, I know that you're an ambassador for Ronald McDonald House. You've done it for a number of years. Um, now that you're a dad, I suppose it changes a bit of perspective because you're going in there and you do some great work with Ronald McDonald House. For those that don't know uh, the great work you do, do you just want to share, uh, you know, what it is that you do for Ronald McDonald House there at uh, Randwick? Um, yeah, I often, I'll go in when I can, um, you know, and just hang out and just see see the kids, um, chat to their parents, chat to their brothers, sisters, and just just hang out and um, yeah, do do what I can for them. But as a dad now, yeah, you as know? a dad now, yeah, yeah, I think it, um, yeah, you definitely see it from a different perspective now. Obviously, you know that love that you have for your children, it's it's unlike no other. So um, to be able to now know that what that feels like and then to see what some of these parents and, and families go through with with their young ones it's um yeah it's it really breaks your heart and and you just want to do all that you can to, to help wherever you can good on you mate now finally mate we have a big game as i said a bit earlier taking on the sharks um you know they were pretty solid against the storm on the weekend where do we need to improve and uh what do you expect when we take them on Oh, we expect their best, you know, no matter what their, their lineup ends up being. We know they're a great team, obviously well coached uh, under Fitzy there. So we know they're going to be ready to go and, and we know that we're going to have to be at our best for the 80 minutes if we want to beat them. Do you think it helps it's on neutral ground? Um, yeah, Shark Park's a tough place to play, yeah. obviously. Um, we had that great game, that the finals match last year, which was which was great. Um, but being up at Suncorp, that's, you know, that's where rugby league's sometimes best played. So i um, really looking forward to that and to Magic Round. You know, it's such a great atmosphere there every year and, and it's a game that we really look forward to. What's it like as a player running out at Suncorp for Magic Round? Because there's different jumpers and obviously there's all the different fans. Does it change the, the feeling when you run on the field? Because I suppose there's not as much booing and cheering. What's it like as a player when you're running out? Because it's such a great stadium to play at, right? Yeah, like I remember my first year um, playing, we played Canberra in the afternoon at Suncorp. It's a triple header or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like you're playing Canberra uh, in Brisbane on a on an afternoon and it's just like that, That's I remember that spinning me out a little bit, but um, you know, doing it for a number of years now, I know you now know what to expect and you know, it's like I said, it's such a great atmosphere, honestly, it's almost like unlike any other game because the fans are just, they're mad up there, everyone's on the drink and, and having a good time, so yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a game that we look forward to playing each year. Well mate, on behalf of all the Roosters fans, we wish you the best of luck uh, on the weekend, keep doing what you're doing, you're on fire on that right hand edge mate, and uh, you know, obviously with a couple of milestone games we'll be expecting the win, but best of luck on the weekend. Great, thanks, he's that silk, thanks for having me. Thanks Nat.